my brain had bled three times and the doctors and surgeons decided that it was no longer worthwhile me waiting around for surgery while my brain, my blood vessel in my brain continued to bleed, causing all sorts of different deficits like memory loss and not knowing my name and not knowing who I was and you know all the really difficult things that cause people trauma during a stroke episode. This is the Recovery After Stroke podcast with Bill Gassiamis, helping you navigate recovery after stroke. Bill from recoveryafterstroke.com. This is episode 31. And today I want to speak to you about how long stroke recovery will take. You may have asked yourself a similar question about your stroke experience. So hopefully this 10 minute video will give you an idea of what stroke recovery is like. Now, before we get started, if you have ever wondered what else I can do to help you with your stroke recovery, you should know that I have set up a few recovery after stroke support packages where stroke survivors can come into a community while trying to get better on their own and get help from other people who have already been further along in the recovery timeline. I too am a three-time stroke survivor and a brain surgery survivor, and I have built for you what I was missing when I was sent home from hospital in the hopes that you don't have to do stroke recovery as tough as I did. Support packages give you access to a variety of tools 24 hours a day, seven days a week, so that you can also work on other areas of stroke recovery that you don't get the chance to work on at physical therapy or rehabilitation. With a cost at less than $8.50 per week, all recovery after stroke support packages bring stroke recovery to your home. To try out recovery after stroke support and see if it is right for you, you will get the first seven days free, as well as a 30 day money back guarantee, no questions asked. As a bonus, you will also get two face to face Zoom support calls with myself to take your recovery to the next level. Just go to recoveryafterstroke.com forward slash support to sign up. It won't cost you anything for the first seven days and you will get a full refund if you are not happy after 30 days. You have nothing to lose and everything to gain. And now it's on with the show. I get some very interesting questions from time to time from the listeners and people that watch on YouTube. And one of the questions I had recently was from somebody who is about a couple of years into their stroke recovery. And the question was something along the lines of, how soon am I going to recover from my stroke? And how long should I expect my recovery to take? Well, it's a very interesting and difficult question. And the reason why it's interesting is because there isn't an answer that I can give that is the same and applicable to everybody who's experienced a stroke because every stroke is different. Not only is every stroke different, every person is different. And as a result, we all have different needs and requirements and we judge how we got to recovered or feeling healed very, very differently. Now, this person that I was speaking to over the week and had set themselves a deadline of, I'm going to be back on my feet and fully recovered within 12 months. And unfortunately, she hasn't reached that milestone in the sense of being fully recovered, but she has got to the point where she's better than she was in the first 12 months. The challenge is sometimes she reflects on her life before stroke and she is constantly wondering whether or not she's going to get back to that version of her life which led to the stroke. Now, that's something interesting for me because in order to help somebody get back to being recovered, one thing that I wouldn't want to do is encourage them to get back to the life that they were leading before the stroke. Because it could be argued that that particular life was the one that got them sick and led to the stroke after all. So what I would rather is I would rather people work towards healing and recovering and being, being better, way better off after they've experienced the stroke and they've put the work in and the time and the learning and the implementation to actually recover and heal and be better in their health than ever before. Now, when I say that, let me qualify that because you can't just be better in your health than ever before if you've had a stroke and you have deficits where you're limping and you've got eye problems or you've got hearing problems or you've got motor neuron problems. So I suppose you can still be healthier than ever before, 
And you can always be working on recovering and healing from the deficits like the limp or the hand not working properly or the speech not being there yet. But I'm not sure whether or not it's wise to encourage people to get back to the life that they were leading before the stroke. If I was to do that, then what that means for me is that I was smoking, I was drinking, I was working excessively, I was highly stressed, I wasn't looking after myself, I was doing way too many hours at work, and that's really not a lifestyle that I want to get back to so that I can feel like everything's normal again. This is a new normal for me, and some of the things that I experience are numbness in my left side, which means that my muscles get tense and tight, which means that I'm constantly in a little bit of pain. The more I get tired during the day, the more the pain kicks in and more the numbness kicks in and then therefore my balance is affected. I get a little bit crankier and I'm a little bit shorter in my temper and I find it harder to get things done and I have to rest more. So I'm learning to readjust with myself because I don't really want to go back to what I was doing three years ago. This week was the third year anniversary after my surgery that led to the numbness in my left side, but ultimately removed the faulty blood vessel out of my head and gave me an opportunity to stop the bleeding. If you've had a stroke and you're in recovery, you'll know what a scary and confusing time it can be. You're likely to have a lot of questions going through your mind. Like, how long will it take to recover? Will I actually recover? What things should I avoid in case I make matters worse? Doctors will explain things, but obviously you've never had a stroke before. You probably don't know what questions to ask. If this is you, you may be missing out on doing things that could help speed up your recovery. If you're finding yourself in that situation, stop worrying and head to recoveryafterstroke.com where you can download a guide that will help you. It's called seven questions to ask your doctor about your stroke. These seven questions are the ones Bill wished he'd asked when he was recovering from a stroke. They'll not only help you better understand your condition, they'll help you take a more active role in your recovery. Head to the website now, recoveryafterstroke.com and download the guide. It's free. My brain had bled three times and the doctors and surgeons decided that it was no longer worthwhile me waiting around for surgery while my brain, my blood vessel in my brain continued to bleed, causing all sorts of different deficits like memory loss and not knowing my name and not knowing who I was and you know all the really difficult things that cause people trauma during a stroke episode. So my advice to you, if you're going through a bit of a tough time and you want to know how long it's going to take to recover from your stroke is let's not put a timeline on it because we don't want to create an environment where we're putting timelines on things and we're getting ourselves frustrated and upset about not having reached a particular timeline or a deadline for lack of a better word. In, but what would be probably more beneficial is if you were able to have somebody record your recovery. So get them to get their smartphone out and record you say once a week or once a fortnight to show you how far you've progressed in the last six months, six days, six hours, whatever it is for you that's important so that you can look back and truly know how far you've come and not feel like you're not getting anywhere constantly. Now, my friend Claire, who asked me that question, experienced something else that kind of had her recovery set back a little bit. And for her, it was a broken leg or a fractured leg. That fractured leg really upset her and gave her a little bit of a difficult time coming to terms with the break rather than getting on with allowing the leg to heal and getting back to the recovery from her stroke. Her stroke meant that she needed physio and a whole bunch of other things and she was doing quite well. And she started to get her independence back. So you can see why a break in her leg might have given her a little bit of a setback and made her feel challenged and made her feel a little bit sad about the situation that she had once again found herself in, which was not being able to be mobile again and trying to find a way to heal. 
stroke does throw many things at people. And sometimes it's okay to feel down and feel disappointed with where you're at and with a setback that's occurred. My advice to you, like Claire did, is to reach out to somebody and have a chat and get it off your chest. Whether that's leaving a comment on a blog post, whether that's leaving a comment at the bottom of this video, whether that's reaching out to somebody that you know in your own community or in another community and just sharing how you're feeling. I really do encourage you talking about what's going on for you as often as possible. I also encourage people to go through the process of seeking professional help, whether it be from a psychologist or somebody who is a very highly qualified, highly skilled life coach so that they can support you and advise you with different ways that you perhaps can overcome some of the negative thinking that goes on after stroke. What this will also do is it will help you potentially overcome or avoid challenges like uh, depression, which occurs to 33% of the stroke population after a stroke. So it's something that I did and it really helped me come to terms with what had happened, come to terms with the fact that I needed to do a recovery and continue recovering. And it also helped me come to terms with how my life has changed. And I spent less time focusing on what I couldn't do and more time focusing on what I could do. I hope this little video has helped you understand that stroke is not something that occurs and often goes away. It often requires a change in lifestyle and we need to take responsibility for our own recovery after we've left the hospital and after the doctors have given us the supposed all clear. The work really starts when you do go at home. Now, Feel free to get in touch with me, leave me a comment, let me know. If there's anything that I can do to answer any one of your questions, I look forward to receiving them. Well, thanks for listening to this episode. If you like this or any other episode on the Recovery After Stroke podcast, please hit the like button if you're watching on social media. Give us a thumbs up if you are watching on YouTube and give the Recovery After Stroke podcast a five-star review on your favorite podcast app. Doing that will make the podcast more visible to other stroke survivors that are doing it tough right now and it could help them feel inspired and feel better about the road ahead. Thanks for tuning in. Discover how to heal your brain after stroke. Go to recoveryafterstroke.com. Importantly, we present many podcasts designed to give you an insight and understanding into the experiences of other individuals. Opinions and treatment protocols discussed during any podcast are the individual's own experience, and we do not necessarily share the same opinion, nor do we recommend any treatment protocol discussed. All content on this website and any linked blog, podcast, or video material controlled this website or content is created and produced for informational purposes only and is largely based on the personal experience of Bill Gassiamis. The content is intended to complement your medical treatment and support healing. It is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice and should not be relied on as health advice. The information is general and may not be suitable for your personal injuries, circumstances, or health objectives. Do not use our content as a standalone resource to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease for therapeutic purposes or as a substitute for the advice of a health professional. Never delay seeking advice or disregard the advice of a medical professional, your doctor, or your rehabilitation program based on our content. If you have any questions or concerns about your health or medical condition, please seek guidance from a doctor or other medical professional. If you are experiencing a health emergency or think you might be, call 000 if in Australia or your local emergency number immediately for emergency assistance or go to the nearest hospital emergency department. Medical information changes constantly. While we aim to provide current quality information in our content, we do not provide any guarantees and assume no legal liability or responsibility for the accuracy currency or completeness of the content. If you choose to rely on any information within our content, you do so solely at your own risk. We are careful with links we provide. However, third-party links from our website are followed at your own risk and we are not responsible for any information you find there.